Hi Life Sciences students, today we are carrying on with our theme of prac skills and this section is on controlled variables compared to what is a control. So some people get very confused between the two, whether you do or you don't, it's okay, I'm going to explain the differences so hopefully you'll understand and you'll be able to do these better. Okay, so let's first talk about controlled variables. When you're doing an experiment, you have one independent variable, one input variable that you are varying, only one, and then you have your resultant variable, which is your dependent variable, and that depends, of course, on what you have changed in the experiment. Now, when you do an experiment, in order for it to be accurate, you need to ensure that every other variable is controlled. Otherwise, you're going to have more than one independent variable, and that will affect the results of the experiment. So let's look at some controlled variables for the following three experiments. They're the same experiments as we did with hypothesis testing, so hopefully it will just be a good continuation for you. Right, so to determine which substances contain glucose, remember we spoke about apple juice and lemon juice and egg white. So we have got three different substances. We have three test tubes. Okay, and we're going to add to the one, we're going to add apple juice, and then the next one, lemon juice, and then egg white. Now, if I decided to add 10 mils of apple juice, 2 mils of lemon juice, and 100 mils of, which you can't really, into a test tube, of egg white, that is now creating a new variable. So you, one thing you have to do if you're adding different substances, you must keep the volume of each substance exact. Okay, so let's say we're going to add 10 mils of each of the substances to each test tube. So that's one thing that you're ensuring is the same for each of your experiments. This is another thing that you can control or do another controlled or fixed variable would be the amount of Benedict's. Let's say we're doing the glucose test with Benedict's. Okay, so we're going to add, let's say, five mils of Benedict's to each. Again, you can't add one, two, and seven because you will definitely get a different color change in each of them because there's a different amount of Benedict's. So that would have to be the same. Okay, how do you make sure that they are fixed? You'd use the same apparatus. So either you can use a measuring cylinder to measure it or you can use a syringe and you'd get the exact same measurement. A third thing would be obviously you now need to heat them. If you didn't heat them at the same, for the same amount of time, again, that would affect the results of the experiment. So you'd put them, um, let's say you decide to make a water bath, okay, which you can take a beaker and you can put boiling water in the water bath. You'd put them all inside like that, okay, and you would have to have them at the same temperature for the same amount of time. There we have two controlled variables. So if you had a water bath of whatever, it wouldn't actually matter what the temperature was because they would all be at the same temperature. Of course you'd add boiling water because you have to heat them. But if you're not putting them in separate water baths, you're putting them in the same water bath, which means that they're all exposed to the same temperature. Okay, how would you measure that temperature? Of course you would use a thermometer. And then the same amount of time that would be left in that water bath, you would put them in at the exact same time and you would take them out at the exact same time. Five minutes, ten minutes, whichever is stipulated. But the idea is that it's exactly the same. Okay, those are the controlled or the fixed variables. And it ensures that the results are very reliable or very accurate because you're not varying other things except for your independent variable. So now we get to what is a control. A control is what is the, is the experiment that you know what the outcome is going to be. So, for example, there's a, in this specific experiment, there's a positive control and there's a negative control. So we want to see, is there glucose in, over, in this? What would be a positive control? If you had to take pure glucose powder and dissolve it in water, that would obviously have a positive glucose test with Benedict's or failings. So that is called a positive control. A negative control would be water. Pure water, again, we know does not contain glucose. So that would be your negative control. And then, why do you have this control? The control allows you to compare your results to what you know, to what you expect, so that you can make comparisons and you can make conclusions. Because if glucose turns bright red and water stays blue, 
Then you know those results and then you can compare the apple juice, the lemon juice and the egg white. So, um, that is what the control is. Okay, and why do you need a control? You need a control as a basis for comparison to ensure your results that you get are due to your independent variable, not another factor. For example, if water went, went brick red, then you can say, hold on a second, it's not the fact that there's glucose or no glucose that makes the Benedict's red, something else is causing that. And then you know your whole experiment needs to start again, something's affecting the experiment. So that is why you have this control. Let's look at the next one. To see the effects of sunlight have on the rate of photosynthesis in a plant. Okay, so you've got your sunlight, your light source, you've got your plant, and you want to see how much photosynthesis occurs. Okay, so what are your controlled variables? Well, everything else needed for photosynthesis. So, the temperature of the room, the carbon dioxide concentration, the amount of water the plants have. If you're going to use different plants, make sure the plants look the same. Okay, they can't be different. And um, so those are all the controlled variables. Everything else, no matter what you're setting up, needs to be controlled. So you can have different light sources, they need to be, uh, that is your independent variable, that's what's going to change. Everything else, every other environmental factor, because it's a plant, has to be the same for each experiment. A control for this, you'll only really have a negative control for this, because in this case you know that sunlight is needed for photosynthesis. You want to see how the, the strength or the intensity of the light affects the rate of photosynthesis. So in this case, by removing sunlight, that is your negative control. You take sunlight away from the equation and now, of course, there will be no photosynthesis. So you can say that you can now compare it. If it still makes bubbles in the, in the dark, then you can say, hold on a second, again, there's something else that's causing the plant to make bubbles, not necessarily photosynthesis, and then you can relook at your experiment. So that is why a control is so important. Okay, and here we go again to demonstrate that albumin and milk contain proteins. What are the controlled variables? It's very similar to this first one. The same volume of milk and albumin, the same volume of, of the biorate test of copper sulfate and sodium hydroxide. You use the same. And remember, you always control things using a measuring cylinder or a syringe, depending on what apparatus you have. Okay, so those are pretty much the same. What is a control here? Again, it's either going to be a negative control or a positive control. A negative control would be water. You know there's no protein in water. And then obviously you could take a black pure protein, like whey powder, pure protein powder, or something like that. You know that's pure protein, and that would be your positive control. Okay, so I've gone through these experiments looking at controlled variables versus a control. Um, just keep practicing it. I'm sure you've got lots of examples. Just keep going through what's a control variable, what is a control. Try and separate those in your head. And if you really struggle with the term controlled variable, use the word fixed variable. It has to be the same for all of your experiments. Okay, good luck controlling your variables. Cheers.